uh, used by many church traditions around the world. Um, it was written by Sir Arthur Robert Grant in 1833, and it's one of the most very popular best hymns that express the lyrics uh, and match them with the music in the most triumphant style that we know. If you look at in your bulletin, the hymnal in front of you, this hymn is number 842. And I invite you to, while we're playing this, read through the words. Um, you can hum along, follow along. I promise you this is a not any reference to what's happening in England right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did program this piece before <laughs> all that stuff uh, happened, but um, in my research, this hymn makes use of 19th century monarchy splendor, and it's a metaphor. Um, for the, the kings we have here on earth, and of course our heavenly king. Um, attributes of an earthly monarch are magnified to communicate the characteristics of the one king of kings, the one who nature cannot describe. So this is a fanfare on O Worship the King. We'll do, uh, take a little bit of a break from the uh, sacred section a little bit. Um, we played this piece back in July as part of our patriotic concert, and we loved it so much that we wanted to just keep it thrown in for this concert. This is a unique march um, called the Sunflower March, and we paired it with uh, a moment to recognize and honor what was happening in Ukraine back in July. So I'd like you to think about that again this evening. There are hints of somewhere over the rainbow in this march, so see if you can pick that out. 
in the second half. The next piece, Beautiful River, uh, you might guess, is based on the familiar tune, Shall We Gather at the River? And it's a traditional Christian hymn written by 
American pastor and gospel music composer Robert Lowry, who lived from 1826 to 1899. One hot afternoon in July of 1864, as Pastor Lowry was resting on his sofa, visions of heavenly heaven pervaded in his senses. He saw a bright golden throne room and a multitude of saints gathered around the beautiful, cool, crystal river of life. He was filled with a sense of great joy. He began to wonder why there seemed to be so many hymns that referenced the river of death, but few hymns that mentioned the river of life. As he mused, his, the words and the music to this hymn, hymn came to his heart and mind. Shall We Gather at the River has become a favorite song of Southern camp meetings, water baptismal services, and funerals. And it's also the favorite hymn of the church where I play at, First Baptist in Lewisburg, where Robert Lowry served as the pastor from 1869 to 1875. Many people think he wrote Shall We Gather at the River while in Lewisburg about the river that we know, but he did not. So that's a myth. <laughs> but this is a beautiful arrangement of our beloved hymn, Shall We Gather at the River. The next tune, a hymn tune rhapsody, is based on the hymn Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. It starts 
in a very soft, reflective style, but quickly moves into a multimeter section that's pretty uh, aggressive and different. It'll get you tapping your toe in a different type of meter. We switch back and forth between 6-8 and 3-4 meter. So you'll feel a pulse of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It just feels a little bit different. So if you can think of that beautiful melody with that underlying pulse, maybe you can't think of it, but you're going to hear it. Here it is. <laughs>
this time I'd like to take a quick moment and introduce our special guests up here that are part of the Harvest Festival festivities. <laughs> Ladies, if you want to stand. These are our princess pageant candidates and of course our princess on the end, so Laura. <laughs> So if you would welcome, have me welcome these ladies, and thank you for your service. If you were fortunate enough to be at the pageant last evening, you heard these ladies talk a little bit about themselves, talk about their hobbies, their passions, and why they love this community. And it was really inspiring to hear a lot of them speak last night. So thank you very much. Their responsibilities this week are almost endless. They're going to a lot of events um, that we have across the community. So we thank you uh, for representing Milton and for being here this evening. Thank you. The next two pieces are slow and reflective in nature. So it's a time to sit back and reflect, maybe meditate, even if you're into meditating, you're in a great, wonderful space to do that. The first piece uh, is entitled, In Paths of Truth and Grace, but it's in reference to the hymn, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. And if you want to pull out the hymnal again, this is number 782. These words are magnificent, uh, so I invite you to read through them as we play. That's all I'm going to say.
you want to keep that hymnal out and look at 763. 763, another Lowry favorite. How can I keep from singing? Some may know it. My life goes on in endless song. A beautiful, another beautiful set of lyrics that go with a beautiful melody composed by Lowry. And now we're going to completely change the style again. <laughs> a lot of that slow has gone out the window because we're going back to a march. But this is a march that's, that's constructed a little bit differently um, by a gentleman by the last name Barry. 
It combines two hymns that you might be familiar with, or two gospel pieces, God Be With You Till We Meet Again, and Sweet By and By, if you know Sweet By and By. So this is an interesting arrangement of those two pieces work together. The next piece that we're going to do, another march by Susa, also has Sweet By and By in it. So I'll talk about that one in just a minute. But this is um, E.W. Barry's arrangement of God Be With You Till We Meet Again, and Sweet By and By. chance to take a breather after that before we go into another march. We think of John Philip Sousa for the 4th of July and patriotism all the time. We don't think of John Philip Sousa too much for lyrical pieces or concert pieces. However, he did write a lot of other pieces other than marches. This march, the Revival March, is one of his first marches that he wrote. It was a suggestion of his, uh, to write it by uh, one of his teachers or leaders of the Philadelphia Orchestra at the time. Simon Hassler, and his former teacher, John Esputa, made note of the march after he heard it and predicted right then and there that Sousa would turn out to be quite the talented young man. He had said, we're glad to see such proficiency in one so young and predict him to have a bright future. Well, we all know that Sousa had a pretty bright future. Um, as I said earlier, this march incorporates Sweet By and By that you just heard. Uh, so listen for it in the second half of it. Um, feel free to clap along. This one's fun. Have fun with it. And this is Sousa's Revival March. <laughs>
Before we close tonight, I just want to bring your attention to the back of the program, two announcements. Uh, mark your calendars. Two weekends from now, September 24th, we are scheduled to have a uh, tournament of bands at Milton High School. Um, we've had some bands drop out, so it's going to be a smaller show, but I think we are going to continue with it. Um, seven or 6.30, September 24th, we invite you to come out. And then our annual holiday concert's coming up in December already. Can you believe we're going to the end of 2022? Um, September, or Sunday, December 4th is going to be our holiday concert, most likely at Milton High School. Uh, so watch the papers uh, closer to that time for a location. Uh, as you leave this evening, uh, we will accept donations. Uh, this group is completely nonprofit at this point, so any donations you're able to give us are tax deductible, uh, and we thank you for that. These folks don't pay anything to perform. Uh, we rely solely on donations from our audiences. So we thank you for any s support you can, can give us. Finally, I want to thank the group in front of you. These uh, musicians are top-notch. Uh, we pulled this concert, as we always do, together in three rehearsals. Um, so why don't you give them another round of applause? <laughs> and we always wish our concerts could be a little bit longer, but as I said, we do this uh, very quick in three rehearsals, and I respect their time as much as I can, uh, and don't ask them to give too much, but. Um, we love performing as part of the Harvest Festival, and we hope to do it again in the future. So there's a lot of events this week. Um, if you're from Milton, make sure you check out MiltonHarvestFestival.com for all the scheduled events. Their Facebook page is very active, uh, and we hope to see you out. Another musical event coming up this week is Thursday, um, the Pops Concert, the Coral Pops Concert that's going to be at St. Paul's out on the other end of Mahoning Street, 1125 Mahoning Street. Um, the former Christ Lutheran Church. So we hope to see you there for that concert. Um, a lot of great singers. Connie Pauling Young is the director and Sharon Steyer will be directing as well. Uh, I'll be on the piano. Next concert, here we go. <laughs> but we want to pack that audience as well. They've put a lot of time and effort into that performance. So we hope to see you at that concert. And then finally next week, next Saturday, is the big festival day. Uh, arts and crafts and food and music downtown and the big parade at one o'clock on Saturday. So great uh, events this coming week and we hope you take advantage of them. Uh, build that community spirit here in Milton. Finally, thanks again for coming out. This will be our last piece. We will not do an encore after this. I think this piece speaks for itself. Um, there's a lot of craziness in the world right now. There's a lot of transition happening in the world right now. Uh, and this piece really is a, another reflective piece that should mean something to all of us. Let there be peace on earth. We wish you a great evening, a great week to come, and thanks again for attending this evening.
Thank you very much. Nice. Have a great evening. Thank you. Did we tell you once that they moved to the church? Or the Fox concert? Yes, I'll get there like.